Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, one of my favorite stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. Why so? Because there's a nice chemistry connection in here. How? Well, the story is all about Dr. Jekyll, a physician, who brews up a potion that changes him into the evil Mr. Hyde. And there's a chemistry connection here, other, of course, than the potion. What is that connection? Well, to me, chemistry is the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde science because it can do wonderful things, good things, but it can also do evil. For example, morphine can take away pain, but of course it can lead people into addiction. Very often, fictional stories like this have some link to reality. And I think that is the case here as well. The uh, house that Dr. Jekyll lives in is very elaborately described in the book. And it turns out to be a parallel description to a real house in London, in Leicester Square, that belonged to Dr. John Hunter. Dr. John Hunter lived in the 18th century. And he was a famous anatomist. And in those days, dead bodies were difficult to come by. So he had a back door to his house where the grave robbers would bring the bodies. The front of the house was a nice elaborate door where he would receive his distinguished visitors, like Benjamin Franklin was one of his patients. So here was this dual personality. He was in league with criminals at the back of the house, bringing in dead bodies, and of course was a respected physician in front of the house. So that was kind of a Dr. Jekyll and, and uh, Mr. Hyde effect, and Stevenson knew about this. In fact, he even wrote a short story which was based on, on grave robbers. And John Hunter was very interesting in terms of the chemistry that he actually carried out. And that had to do with chickens, with roosters specifically. You know what he did? He removed the testes of roosters. They're actually in the abdomen of the bird. And he saw that their comb, which is this thing on top of the head, would just collapse. And then he reinserted the testicle into the body cavity and the comb grew back. Of course, he didn't realize that at that time, but he had basically laid the foundation to the science of endocrinology because the testes release hormones. Well, 80 years later, this was uh, uh, further researched by Arnold Berthold in, in Germany, another physician, and he replicated the work. And even he didn't realize that hormones were involved, but he was very clear about taking testes even from one chicken, putting into another one, and still cause the uh, comb to, to grow. And believe it or not, this led to some human experiments. Serge Voronoff, a physician in France, actually took testes from executed criminals and implanted them into men, hoping to rejuvenate them. Hundreds of these surgeries were carried out around the world until the Royal Society of Medicine said, no, no, this is poppycock. But there were still a lot of men who wanted this kind of intervention, thinking that they would be able to chase chicks around like young cocks. So this is the background to the story of Dr. Jekyll and, uh, and Mr. Hyde. And background is, of course, all about chemistry. And eventually it turned out that the stuff that was being released by the testes was testosterone. And there you have a real Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde chemical, because for aging men, testosterone therapy can be very therapeutic, but it also has been abused by athletes who think that it's going to make their muscles grow and they get all kinds of side effects from it. So go out there and read the great story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and the potion that turned the good doctor into the evil Mr. Hyde.